Hi guys, so this trailer that I'm about to talk about is kind of a big deal for me and I don't feel like I can properly get into my thoughts and feelings on it unless I give you guys some context about where I'm at going into this. So my favorite character of all time is Harley Quinn. Uh, what I would consider the actual version of Harley Quinn, and we'll get into that in a minute. And I don't mean my favorite character in that she's like my favorite Batman character, she's my favorite comic book related character. No, I mean as a person who consumes media, who makes her own media all the time, Harley Quinn is my favorite character of all time. And she is a character that I think was destroyed over the years Worse than I've ever seen any piece of fiction or fictional character assassinated, destroyed, taken completely away from what it was supposed to be. More than any other piece of fiction that I've ever seen anywhere. And, you know, in a day and age when we're using a lot of franchises, making a lot of remakes, um, you know, nostalgia baiting a lot, like that is no small statement. You know, a lot of you can have your examples about a character's being changed from where they were supposed to be, being assassinated. Harley Quinn takes the cake from, if you have any idea from where the character was supposed to be so what, to what she is now. Now, let's, let's just, uh, this could be an entire video on and of itself. I've been thinking about doing one for a while, but I don't know if I'm up to it about exactly why that happened, how it happened, why it happened detailing the whole history. I'll just give you the short version. Harley Quinn is supposed to be a character, um, basically she's a serial killer groupie, a serial killer fangirl. Uh, she is a psychiatrist who fell into an obsession with the world's worst serial killer, the Joker, and lost herself over that. She was supposed to be a cautionary tale of abuse. She was a paradoxical character, though. She had a side of her that still retained some innocence. She had a side of her that was very dark and only wanted very wicked things. You know, she had a side of her that was very empathetic and another side of her that allowed her to be blind spotted. So, uh, she was a fully fleshed out character, but one that was an about an obsession. And that kind of fit her in to the mold of Batman villains, where every Batman villain is about uh, an all consuming obsession with something else. With Two Faces duality, with Poison Ivy, it was supposed to be plants, with Joker, it was supposed to be Batman. So that was Harley Quinn. And she, honestly, she had a lot of comedy to her. Another one of the paradoxical things about her is she had this very bubbly, Judy Holiday esque personality, but, uh, you know, it was offset by very dark themes. Themes. So she fit very nicely into the Batman universe as having these dark themes and having this depth to her and fitting into the whole tone of this universe. However, during the 2010s, the character went through a major overhaul, one that was very unnecessary as she already had plenty of her own fans. So basically, just to give you the very, very short version of it, uh, this two things happened. Number one, DC Comics, the comic book uh, aspect of DC, not anything else. DC Comics specifically, I don't think that they ever really understood the character. They never used her very well. But the, the editor-in-chief at the time, Dan Didio, got it into his head because he saw how well Deadpool was selling for Marvel. This is a direct quote from, you know, one of the Harley books from Jimmy Palmiotti. But Dan Didio saw how well Deadpool was doing for Marvel and he got it, it suggested to him to use Harley Quinn to compete with Deadpool. From there, Harley Quinn's personality went through an entire overhaul and she became a basically one-dimensional ripoff of Deadpool. Basically, all of her character, all of the tone of her character, m most of the traits, all of that completely overhauled so that she was basically a DC doing a bad Im imitation of Deadpool. And the character became increasingly changed and it especially happened after the first Suicide squad came out that the character was motivated more and more by just selling merchandise because as her merchandise got popular dc stopped catering to the people who actually knew the character and liked her comics and all of the stuff that was already out and started to catering to people who just knew her through merchandise and what they perceived the character as and what they thought that those people would want the character to be uh one of those big changes that happened is harley you know three-dimensional character a lot there's a lot more to her but one of the most important aspect to her was that obsession with the joker that all 
all-consuming, uh, breaking down obsession with the Joker, and they remove that as well to make the character safer, more palatable, less offensive, for more merchandise, of course. And so, over the years, Harley was completely changed as a character. But I do not think that even financially it was to her benefit, because while the comics that they made that Deadpool Eyes to her sold in the beginning, they stopped selling, and while DC still tries to spew out comics with her and have for years, uh, they have not been able to get a run for her to sell in a very long time. The movies that they try with this new Deadpoolized version, Birds of Prey, did not sell. It bombed at the box office. Uh, you know, uh, they went that way with the Arkham Video Games version with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and everyone hated it. There is a certain group of people out there, mostly on Twitter I've seen, that do enjoy, like, the new Harley. Uh, yeah, I know that they have that animated show. I don't know how many people actually watch that show. I would expect not very many. There are some people out there who like l the new Harley, but I have seen the character go from where she was a fan favorite among Batman fans, and she was just breaking out into the mainstream with Suicide Squad to becoming more and more niche and to get more and more hate. That is very, very important. And she's just just been so destroyed. I haven't even scratched the surface of how much she's been destroyed. I haven't uh, scratched the surface of like the, the soft pork core porn aspects of the characters, and no, I'm not talking about what was in Suicide Squad 2016. That was not what I'm talking about at all. No, I mean actually using the character for soft core porn. And anyway, um, so that's kind of me setting the stage. So I got to a place where I finally had to emotionally detach myself from it for a while because I just could not take seeing what they were doing and um anymore and i held on to it for a long time and uh, i'm like i this is not giving me any happiness anymore or any good experience with any content with harley quinn anymore i and i can't do anything about it i need to step back so here we come to the Joker uh, 2 trailer that we just got out. And once again, telling you all that was lost with the character, the dark aspects of the character, the depth, the fact that she used to be an actual Batman character feeding into these themes of insanity and all of that. She has not felt like a Batman character in years. Whenever they've tried to reintegrate her into Batman comics, it hasn't worked because the characters become so changed and not even consistently changed. She's all over the place. But anyway, once again, so much to talk about, but... We get this trailer for Joker 2, and it brings back what we haven't seen in years. I would say the big overhaul for Harley's character, not just in comics, but everywhere, happened probably in 2017, right after uh, Suicide Squad came out. But even Suicide Squad, I would say that was the start where the character ceased to be a character and just became merchandise. And for years, just people who, ha who, who will not read anything with her, who will not research what this character actually is, just projecting their ideas of what they think she is. Because Suicide Squad 2016 did not give you a good idea of who she was and it made some people think that Joker and Harley were supposed to romanticize abuse and people are still screaming about that. It, it did not develop the character for audiences at all. So here's this character that everyone thinks they know but don't actually know because she's never been given a good mainstream representation. Once again, back to Joker 2. After all these years, now almost a decade of the character being ruined and misunderstood and changed, we get to Joker 2, and even though it's supposed to be set in an alternate universe, I see so much of this that has been lost in the character come back, where it's a dark setting. It's it's trying to be mature again, just like Batman the Animated Series, even though it was a kid show, that was trying to be mature. And to see her, you know, she doesn't have the, the, the um, uh, Brooklyn accent like she's supposed to have, but th that's fine by me. I would rather that somebody is giving a grounded portrayal of Harley, at least before she becomes Harley Quinn, um, rather than just screaming bad jokes at the audience constantly because the character's comedy changed into something just absolutely toxic, honestly. And, you know, to see the imagery of her back with the Joker, you know, what really got me in the trailer was seeing Joker and Harley in big letters and seeing them dancing in the rain at Arkham. And I'm like, that is Harley Quinn. And that is the Joker. Even though this is an alternate universe, I understand that it is closer to anything I have seen for Harley Quinn in years. Because even an alternate universe version is closer to what that character is than anything that we've gotten. 
and the cinematography looks great. The musical elements, um, they're really downplaying in the marketing. Um, but I get it with what they're doing, that it's these delusions in the characters' heads. And um, you see Arthur, and I don't think he can be an abusive version because of his backstory, but you see him getting taken in by her that he finally has a friend now. Now, there is where my fear comes in because I saw set photos last year of um it looked like carly was giving up the joker to the police and she was singing a song about it was all a charade so i'm wondering if this movie is actually going to reveal it that harley is just manipulating the joker to think that she's her friend and to get what she wants and that could either be good or bad based on the context and under normal circumstances, if the last eight years hadn't have happened, then I would be perfectly fine for them doing a story where it's Harley who's manipulating the Joker. The reason why I don't like it now is because they have overdone this Harley gets over the Joker story. Harley is strong and can defeat everyone and is smarter than everyone. I've seen it a million times over now. It doesn't work. It goes uh, completely against what the character is supposed to be. It, it's assassinated her, uh, and she does not work her best as the strong, smart person in the room. However, like I don't know exactly what the context of it behind the scenes. The context of this could make it work. So I'm still trepidatious about the actual end product of this film and what we're going to get by it. But just going by this trailer, I'm so happy to get a version of Harley Quinn that actually feels like a character again that actually feels like a person that actually feels like something more than just a walking ad for merchandise that actually feels like even even with my fears that i mentioned up is actually trying to do something uh, maybe more mature is actually trying to say something is doing something artistic what i hope for this film you know, even if maybe the Harley and Joker stuff doesn't play out like I would like it to, what I hope for this film is I hope that it makes Harley Quinn an actual character again. I hope that, you know, people actually have maybe some understanding of what she can be and the depth, that's important, the depth that she can have. So that, of course, other writers, I mean, other writers, other filmmakers will want to use her in the future for maybe like in the Batman proper universe. And maybe, you know, what I've been worried about is are we ever going to get a Harley that feels like she can fit in the Batman universe again? Will people like Matt Reeves or whoever is directing upcoming Batman films ever want to use her again when they just see her as this Deadpool ripoff? And... This movie could have good influence on that, and it could, it, I'd love to see the red and black aesthetic back after years of that pink and blue crap, I'll just call it that. Um, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that Lady Gaga, I, I like what I see from her performance so far, and it looks particularly crazy and I, I you know you, you can just see it in her expressions I'm hoping that that gets people off this idea that Margot Robbie is the only one who can play her when in my opinion Margot Robbie really didn't do anything with the character and so that's that's really my feelings on this movie it will it be everything that I want like as of now probably not I still wish that we were getting this story told in the Batman universe properly it looks different enough from Harley's origin story that the door is still open to properly explore her origin in an actual Batman movie but so far I'm on board with it and I really want to see how this plays out and I am hoping that it has good influence on the character. But that's what I got for you guys today. People definitely seem excited about it. And once again, it shows people do like the story and the imagery of Joker and Harley. We don't need to be horrified that they're in the same scenes together, guys. And, and so that's what I'm really glad to see this coming back. And finally, maybe, we'll, we'll see, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm just hoping that this undoes the damage that Suicide Squad 2016 did to the character and maybe has something positive for her in the future. But that's all I got for you guys today uh th thank you patrons as always for supporting my channel i have a short film that i'm almost done editing that's going to be released very very sh soon please stay tuned for that and more great videos on this channel and we'll see you guys next time